Hey there, Mrs. B here. We are going to do a tutorial about using the blur tool and the paintbrush tool. And so what I did was I logged on to Google Images and I um, just Googled superhero. And you want to find a picture that has um, a solid background that's like really crisp, something that you can blur out. When I was scrolling, I found this one of Deadpool and I thought, well, she's really blurry. I want to make him really blur blurry, too, because I want to emphasize Deadpool. Um, something like, this one could work over here with Superwoman. You could blur out all the rest of the guys and have her really crisp. It's kind of up to you. But if I pick this one, I'm going to drag it on the desktop. I already had it there. But I'm going to drag it on the desktop. And I'm going to load it into Photoshop. And so... I have it right here. I'm going to load that. I'm going to click OK. And then I'm going to load my image onto Photoshop and just drag it in there. And so, keeping in mind, you can do Control Z to zoom in, Control minus to zoom out. And so, our goal is to blur him. And so, over here on the left side, you're going to see this tool right here. It looks like a raindrop. It's a blur tool. And what that does is literally going to do that. It's going to blur whatever it is that you glide across with. And so you, if you look up here, you might need to change the size of your blur tool. This is really big. This is great for over here. But when I get closer to Deadpool, I probably got to lower my size a little bit and make it a smaller circle. You can get pretty small. The hardness level is it'll just make a much crisper line when you're trying to blur versus when it's softer it will almost blur into his jacket a little more easily but it also makes the line less, less noticeable if you are blurring with a softer edge normally my hardness edges aren't that um, stark unless I really need it normally I have it on the softer side and so what I'm gonna do is there's there's different um, blur like different types of blurring right here that you can pick from although anything right here like that's a paintbrush technically that's going to change its color so just be aware of that but it's already on probably what I want and I'm gonna change my size and I'm just gonna start blurring him out and you might not notice it right away because the longer you hold with your mouse and drag over your picture the more blurry it's going to get and so I'm just going to keep going. He got really blurry, and that's that's what I want. Because I want to emphasize him looking very surprised. And you can zoom in. You'll notice it's getting even blurrier. That can give you a little bit of a headache, though, if you're not careful. And I'm going to keep working this until I feel I want to blur out his belt. And it's a subtle change until you build up that layer, but subtle is okay. I'm going to even do it over here. Now, once I get closer to Deadpool, I'm going to lower the size of my brush. And I'm going to be very careful with where I'm blurring. I might go into his, his um, frame just a little bit, because you won't really tell. And if you make a mistake with this and you don't like it, you can hit Control Z and that'll go backwards. Or you can do it up here, edit, step backwards, or undo blur tool, Control Z. Step backwards is if you made a lot of mistakes and you want to hit that, it'll take away a good chunk of what you just blurred. And you just want to keep going. So that's nice about Photoshop is you can always go back and fix it if you made that mistake. It's never permanent. You just hit those undo buttons. Control, Control Z is one of my favorite <laughs> buttons on Photoshop. That's for sure. And that's perfectly okay. So this is about what I want. I think this is really emphasizing our Deadpool character. And we got rid of this guy. I don't remember his name. Tin Man or something. And so, this is what we want. That's, that's the blur tool. And so now maybe I'm like, you know what? 
instead of it being blurry, maybe what I want to do is I want to actually completely take them out. And I want it to be white. And I just want Deadpool in the picture. Um, there's a couple of different ways you can do this, but for the sake of this tutorial, we're going to use a we're going to use the paintbrush tool, which is right here, paintbrush tool. So you can see it covers it up. And one thing you can do is you'll you can it's the same thing, change your brush size, the the hardness of it. And right now it's it's you'll see if you look to the right, it's on white for the background. You can change the color with whatever it is you want, but we'll do white for the sake of this tutorial. I'll make my brush size a lot bigger. And I'm going and you'll notice my it's fanning out and almost looking kind of feathered and faded. That's because my hardness level is super low. If I were to bring this up, the hardness level is isn't going to be as faded out. It's not going to be as like ghostly. And so as you get closer to him, you're going to get smaller and you're going to very carefully try to go around him and this is where zooming in will really help and if you feel like the hardness level isn't right you can fix it and you just keep going now for the sake of this tutorial I don't want it to be too long while you're looking at it so this is going to be a relatively rough version of Deadpool with a white background. Like I said, you don't have to do white if you don't want to. I just did white because I thought it might look nice. Um, oh, made a mistake, so I'm going to do Control Z and I'm going to get rid of that because I went into his head too far. Which happens. I'm just going to keep going. And there's, there's tons of different ways to um, put in a different background on Photoshop. This is just one way for this particular tool. You want to make sure you don't leave any patches. Just try to quickly do this here. And I'll have to get really zoomed in. Control plus so I can really get in there. So that means it's going to be really small. Mm -hmm, really small and I'm going to use this to scroll. Uh, normally a graphic designer would spend a long time fading this out. It might take them an, maybe an hour just to like do the arm because they're so meticulous and calculated because if it's for a company or advertising they have to be very precise for the sake of this tutorial though. All right. So here I have my Deadpool, and now he has that white background. Um, if you feel like it looks a little fuzzy around him, because I used the more of a fuzzier brush, you can go back and kind of harden it a little bit with a harder level, like my hardness increased a little bit for this tool, and it becomes much sharper if it's raised versus softer brush. I like to start off with the uh, the softer brush because it's not so harsh and then I go in with the harder one if, if necessary. And you can tell he's starting to kind of come together. A lot of zooming in, a lot of zooming out. A little bit right here. Well, Command Z if you make a mistake. That's pretty good. We'll go into up here. So it takes a little while with Photoshop, and this is just one picture. I'll go into his ear a little bit. And so that's that's a good general rough outline. And so there I have my Deadpool. I completely got rid of the background and turned it white. 
I used the blur tool in the beginning but decided hey I didn't want to do that now I just got Deadpool as my main emphasis and that is how you use the blur tool and the brush tool of course with the brush tool you can also draw and you can do other things like change the color and I could make something if I wanted to some type of background or some type of pattern Control Z, maybe I don't like that. You can go up in here and you can change. You can do special effects and you can change and do different patterning that you might like. Control Z. Um, we'll do step backwards. Alt Control Z. And I might go in and I'm like, oh, you know what? What happens if I try this Kyle concept? And I try something there. Well, actually, I don't know what's happening with that guy. But there's all sorts of ones that you can use. Dry brush media. You know, that makes a different line versus this is going to be more almost look like chalk. I don't know what you would use it for. Maybe a pattern in the background. We could look at wet media brushes. And this is an impressionist blender. We wanted that. You can change the color. Doesn't have to be per se. Well now I'm just getting a little carried away here, but you get the point. You can have fun with these special effect brushes. That's what I got in earlier. It's not necessarily a tool that's used a lot, the paint tool, because you would use the paint tool more so in Illustrator and things like that. But for some effects, you might use it. Like this gritty thing was kind of cool. Um, I kind of like that. You know, I do something something kind of fun and playful. Maybe I have more over here. Now I made a texture now and it could be used as a banner for Twitter, a banner for Facebook or Inst oh, Instagram doesn't have banners, but a website. Um, uh, it could be a banner for YouTube, anything like that. But there you have it. There's the two tools and um, enjoy practicing.